You know how the day goes when you start the morning the way you want and a little bit of contemplative quiet time, some of the favorite habits that you have, and then you prepare for the activities of the day, the goals are all set, you know the projects you need to get done, and then it seems like the world wakes up, everybody goes to work, the busyness of the day kind of permeates the air. And maybe you work from home and you don't think you're affected by that. Or maybe you work in an office and you've driven to the office and you've got into the office and you got all set up, but pretty soon all the colleagues are in, everybody's been working for a little bit. And then the conversations start, the interruptions, the emails arrive, the phone calls continue. And that's how the day progresses. It becomes a place of not so much proactive care, but actually reactive care as you try to navigate all the challenges of the projects and activities required of you to finish your daily activities. I'm sharing with you a little bit behind the scenes about the Be Well with Michelle Greenwell podcast today. And I want to invite you to start to think about how you approach your day and how listening to the podcast and listening to the people that I interview on the podcast, how they might be able to support you in a much better way. So let's get started. You're listening to Be Well with Michelle Greenwell. This is sponsored by the Cape Breton Tea Company, as well as Dance Debut Inc. So hello, everyone. This is the place where I usually invite my guest in. And what I'm going to do is invite you in today. And I would like you to think about how you start your day and how it could be better for you. What kinds of changes or feelings or inspirations are you looking for that help you to be uh, comforted, nourished, uh, focused, um, in place with all that you want to do? And I'm just going to invite you to either envision that or write it down. And I have a notebook that I keep my goals and my intentions in and I've tried to follow through you know checking back on them periodically to see where I've been and where I've gone to it's a great way to just look back and notice how much change has happened since you started recording so now that you have that goal in mind I would like to now invite you to see the cards and the activities that I chose for today um, and I choose these things not by going and trying to find the best card, but I actually go by just cutting the deck. So I'm going to share with you, and for those people who are on the podcast who aren't going to be able to see, I'm going to try to describe the pieces to you. So first of all, this season, I'm focused on the affirmations for the body and the biofield deck. What that means is, and I'm just going to hold up the cover, which you, you can often see me do or hear me do uh, with each podcast. So I show you the picture of baby and child, and that is the title that Tanya's given to this little piece of art. And it's a beautiful ribbon of color, but you can see two figures in it. And so for those people who are listening on the podcast, it's like a twisty, turny piece, it almost looks like it's a, a glass sculpture. Tanya Levy takes photographs of nature, mostly of Cape Breton or mainland Nova Scotia in Canada, and she runs them through special filters. And she has an inspiration that she always has in mind when she's taking the photo or some kind of intention that she's put into the piece of art. And then what we have done is we've taken that art and we've applied it to some of the concepts that we work with as we try to raise the energy in the biofield. So raising the energy around us, but also raising the energy within us. We've also added to the card itself an affirmation, some way for you to connect energetically to who you are. And it could be through a body part, could be through a joint, could be through a system, could be through the chakras or the auric field, uh, or it could be something to do with Tai Chi because there's uh, Dantian's included. So there's lots of ways that you can make a connection. The deck has four parts. And I actually keep my deck together, always as much in order as possible. And that's just because when I go to cut the deck, I always want to know if I've got to go look for something, um, because I'm working with a group of people, then I can easily find it. But you could certainly 
shuffle that deck if you wanted to, and then cut the deck. If it's you holding the deck for the first time, you're gonna put the deck into your hands and then give it a tap. And that's just gonna put the energy into it that's your energy plus the intention that you had at the start. And then I invite you to just cut the deck. Now I did that already knowing the areas that I wanted to talk about today. And what I came up with was this beautiful one. I've seen it many times. So I'm holding it up now for those people who are listening on the podcast. It has blue, purple, white rays coming out um, at the very top of the card. At the bottom part of the card, there's some greens and some browns in it. It almost looks like a figure could kind of be sitting there uh, radiating out. The colors on the bottom have some darks that go to black, but then there's these little wisps that almost look like stained glass that are orange and yellow, like tiny little bits in it. So there's the flex of that. But the affirmation that's on the other side is what I want you to now pay attention to. It has to do with feet and toes. Infinitely connected, our footing is our earthly connection as well as our intention direction. Free movement is a gentle push. Power is a suggestion of force. No effort is the result in profound. Now, some people might clue into part of the affirmation, some people to other parts of the affirmation, but it sounds a little bit confusing when you say free movement is a gentle push. Because you think of that as flowing and it's true. And we have the ability to push to try to get what we need. And then we also have those times when we step back and we don't put any force behind it at all, but we also don't know where we're going. So we don't always get the result that we're looking for. But sometimes you can just do that gentle suggestion. It might be the way you look at someone and ask them a question. Could be the way that you set up a meeting. Could be how you decide to do a project and then who you choose to collaborate with and who to bring in. So these are all ways that you could talk about a gentle push. You are controlling in a way in that you're trying to set something up, but then you leave it open to the what ifs. What will happen if I create and cultivate this opportunity? And then I let the energy of the people in that group or that, that way I targeted things to open up and, and show me something, explore something. And then the second part is power is a suggestion of force. So the reminder being, if you have set your intention or your goal, you know where you're going, then the things that you require along the way start to find you. It's like a magnet. If you don't know where you're going, no one can help you. But if you say, here's where I'm going, I need a ticket to get on the bus. I need a map to know where I'm gonna be. I need the, my watch to tell me what time so I arrive on the right time. Those little pieces all come into effect. The same with your goal and intention. You have a vision, you have a project, you have something that you want to accomplish. And the pieces that you need that you might not even be aware of can be attracted to the project. So that's where power is a suggestion of force. So that's just, you set things in motion, you have the opportunity to participate to a point, and then without judgment, without anticipation of outcome, you let go, see what happens. And this is the no effort is the result and profound. You sit back, you find things, things arrive to you. I've had so many wonderful gifts that come through on an email. Somebody calls me, a message comes through, I meet new people, all of that leading up to information I wouldn't have had to complete my project in a way that I did I would have had the limitations of only what I knew. And that's where the no effort part comes in because things arrive without you seeking them, yet they're a part of the whole project. All right, and then we have feet and toes. So for those of you that have been listening along the way through the podcast, we always have an activity at the end of the podcast to get people thinking about movement and as you've been listening to the podcast, it's set up to help you be balanced and to have this energy flow towards your goal or a goal related to what we were talking about. 
And when you get to the end of the podcast, I always ask for you to think about some kind of movement so that you can actually engage it and activate it. So it's strategically placed there. I'm always interested what my podcast guests will say, but you'll know from me, I spend a lot of time at the feet. My feet have been a barometer of information for several decades. And it started with not being able to walk on my feet and to be able to find the tools and the opportunities to release the pain and to be able to bring function back and then to be able to dance again and then be able to teach. So my feet are very, very valuable to me because they were harboring the most amount of pain and emotional congestion. And they've also been the way for me to pull that out and know when I'm feeling really, really well. And when I've fallen off the track a little bit and I need to get back on the track. So feet and toes are going to be a way for you to think about what does it feel like when I'm standing on my feet? Can I feel the nine points of my of my feet and toes? So you've got the pads of each of the ends of the toes, which they should all be touching the ground equally. And you should have awareness. You may know that you have five toes, but you might not have awareness of all of the toes. The third, fourth and pinky toe very often lose sensation. They've been cramped up in shoes or you've rolled your feet under your chair while you're sitting at your desk. The sensors can shut off, so you might not actually notice. So as you're sitting there now, you might be rolling your feet around and, and feeling those toes and that might be bringing awareness in. Then you have the big ball of the foot and the little ball of the foot. So for those people listening on the podcast, the, beside the big toe joint is where you get a lot of sensor and information navigating you with force, navigating you with power. And so again, going back to that card, it's very interesting what the feet can provide. Then you have on the pinky ball of the foot. So at the base of the pinky toe, on the foot that part in there between the big ball and the little ball those two actually should be feeling the same amount of pressure and when they do you end up with this kind of dome feeling on your foot and it's a very supple feeling but it also shows you the regulation of all the joints throughout the body if it's flat to the floor if not everything is functioning right you're rolling in certain ways the rest of the joints all the way through the body feel that because they're going to be stacked in a certain way based on what's happening within the feet. Now, everything is related to everything. So you could have your shoulders misaligned and that could affect all the way down to the feet for sure. But I'm just going to talk about what you can know from your feet at this point. Then you've got the side of the foot, the outside edge, and then across the heel. And a lot of people stand back on the heel. That's almost like a fight or flight locked position and the knees will lock up. This tells us that there's stress in this lovely system called this, um, sorry, the small intestine where the quadriceps, so your thighs are engaging and sometimes they lock, sometimes they don't function at all. And that locking in the knee can actually shut down the way the quads work that's your power your power getting up from your chair your power sitting down into the chair and then your power for walking or hiking or any activities that you're involved in so as i've talked about this part of the foot if i go to the center of the foot so you've got the ball of the foot so the toes come into the foot the ball of the foot is where that point is on the foot if you go a little bit further down that's where that domey part where, where the, um, uh, not the tension, but the fluidity of the foot is, that's known as the bubbling springs. It's the end of kidney meridian, and it's known as kidney meridian one. And it is the point that sends information into the body, into the kidney system, but also to bladder system, because they're linked together, and they're part of the water element. So when you start to talk about that, it's sending information about how to keep that flow of water happening through the body. The other part is when we are open in that space, it creates a pump. 
And that pumping action is sending information to all the organ systems. It's phenomenal. So all that is coming from your feet. And I haven't even started about how you move on your feet or how you can roll and manipulate on your feet. But it's really amazing how much information can come from that. When the feet are completely engaged and all the reflexes on the bottom of the foot have been uh, empowered so that they work together, then you have this incredible push off your foot. It's no effort. It just propels you forward and you have this like push that comes off the ground and it's lovely because you're not doing all of the effort, but you're reaping the benefits of that connection to the ground and that push off. So I'm telling you all of this because the card that I pulled for today has to do with this grounding bit, this connection to the earth, this feeling of the feet and the toes. And that's what I hope I'm producing when you come to the podcast. When you're listening to the different guests that I have, the questions that I ask, the way that I set up, how did they know to change? How did they know that they wanted a transformation? How did they know um, taking that leap of faith was, was going to be okay? And as we listen to all these people, and then we can go back and reflect on our own lives, we can think about the times we didn't take the leap, the times we did the times where there was success, the times where there might not have been um, as success as we thought it should be. But then in our reflection of looking back, we have that opportunity to reflect on, yes, it might not have turned out the way we had wanted it to turn out, but it may have taken us on a much bigger voyage. We may have met other people along the way. We may have developed new skills. We also may have created something new because of that experience, something that is able to help others and allows us to reach out in a compassionate way, which is also something I try to instill in each of the podcasts. Okay, so we've got feet and toes and that's our card picked, but I also wanted to share another deck with you because we're looking at the start of the summer. This is a great time to develop new habits. Of course, everybody wants to let go and you know, enjoy their vacation, go to the beach, you know, be outside, be active. And I'm all for that. But I'm also for creating opportunity where you bring balance and flow because you can overdo it in the garden and come in and be exhausted on the couch afterwards. You can go for a bike ride and your capacity was for maybe 40 kilometers and you decided you were gonna do 65 and you wore yourself out before you got to the end and it was a struggle to come back. I want to take those opportunities and show you new ways of doing things so that rather than running out of energy or running out of time, which many of us will say, we actually are cultivating. And at the end of the day, we feel as good as we do at the start of the day. Or if the start of our day, we're not feeling as we'd like, then these new habits are going to be a way to cultivate and hold energy and have energy for when you need it to be able to dispense it and actually to cultivate more. And who doesn't want more energy? So I have a second deck, so it's in the cards. So I'm just holding this up for anybody who's listening on the podcast. And I'm sharing this deck with you because this one is full of activities, things that you can do to engage building energy, but also trying to bring balance and flow into systems. It's set up based on the five elements from Chinese medicine, which is how energy flows through the systems. We have several cycles and several layers that happen. What I want to focus on is there's a nurturing cycle. That's where you can be gentle with yourself. There's that non pushing piece. So you just very gently bring these activities in and the body shifts. It's very simple. And then we have the other one, which is known as the co cycle. In the card deck, we called it the stabilizing cycle. And this is one where we focus on when you want to make a change, you want to build a new habit, new patterns, then we can go to this co cycle. It's in the shape of a star if you're looking at an actual diagram of the five elements. And you'll see on the front of the card, there is, it's hard to see the 
the uh, gray at the bottom on my screen is just a little flicker. There we go. Okay, so there's, um, for those listening, there's five hearts. There's a red heart at the top. There's a yellow heart as you go around clockwise. Then there's a gray heart, a gray heart closer to the words the bottom, a blue heart, and then a green heart. And it goes around, I'm coming around in the circle. But if we're looking at the co cycle, it makes a star. So what happens is if we go from red, we go down and across to metal. Then we go up and across to wood. We go over and across to earth and down and across to water, which will take us back up to, to uh, red fire. So we have fire, earth, metal, water, and wood. All right. The reason this is important is we can have a nurturing cycle ready to go. But when we decide we want to make a change, that can be very stressful on our systems. And so what we want to do is look at how could we create pattern changes through the energy cycles so that the body feels really comfortable with the change. It knows why the change is going to be there and able to respond to that. So I pulled out a couple of cards for the earth element. And Earth was kind of the focus of the day today when I, I went to bring all the pieces in. So I pulled two cards and these ones I didn't cut the deck because I actually was looking for something from Earth because I wanted to focus on that. So we have today, and again, I'll see if I can get the reflection correct here, Earth element. You're going to see some feet and a picture of a circle and some arrows. And what we do with this one is when we roll around on our feet, and we pass through those nine points that I talked about, we have the opportunity to engage the stability reflex. It's a neuro reflex that connects brain and body through the feet. And when you engage this reflex, it engages all kinds of parts of the body, including a conversation with the brain. And we could do five different foot sensors to create a nurturing cycle or a pattern changing cycle. But what I picked for today was just to go to the one, just to talk about just stability. And because of the other card that I picked with feet and toes, being able to bring that in. Okay, so that's that first one. So we're gonna do a little bit with that, but I wanted to layer it. That's the other thing. I could do each of these activities individually, but as a person that's been facilitating these kinds of activities for almost three decades. Um, it is so valuable if you layer them up and then you can create change in many different facets at the same time. We would call that multidimensional, holographic, depending on what kind of modality you work in. So this one has a little picture of a bear on it. I'm just gonna turn it so hopefully you can see it in the reflection there. And it has two little red dots and those red dots are on the cheekbones. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to bring in a neurolymphatic, um, sorry, neurovascular holding point. Neurovascular is on the head. Neurolymphatics in the body. Um, so we're going to just be holding those points really lightly with our fingertips. So here's what I'm going to offer to you. I asked you at the beginning to set up a goal. I chose a card to help us do some reflection on effort, non-effort, power and force, and just to bring that in. And now what I'm asking you to do is engage in two activities that's going to bring some flow to that goal. So one is to give you stability and the other one is going to be, this is actually from stomach and spleen, which is part of the earth element. This is the opportunity for you to find some grounding, to feel rooted, to feel the nurturing that can come through from the ground, but also by we're making that connection to our cheekbones, that's to an energy line, stomach meridian, that goes right from the toes all the way up the body, up through the neck to the cheekbone, and then travels back down again. All right, so it travels back down in another system, in another energy line, but we've got to travel that, that one brings it in, and then there's another one that will travel it back. Okay, so I'm gonna get you to roll around on your feet like a clock. Your toes, you're gonna to feel into your toes. That's your 12 o'clock. You're gonna roll over to your right, which is be the outside edges of your feet on the right side, back into the heel, over to the left and back to the toes. 
If you're sitting down like I am, I can feel my feet on the floor, but I can also feel my sit bones, my tailbone, but also the whole pelvic floor. And as I'm rolling through my feet, I can also feel that roll coming into the pelvic floor. This is going to support a lot of muscles within the hip. And in Tai Chi, we talk about uh, the opportunity to have reciprocals. I was trying to think of the word. So the reciprocal is we can move one body part and it can affect another body part. And that makes everything so wonderful. If you have an injury or somewhere that's, you, you have to be a little bit careful of how you move it, you could actually go somewhere else, do the movements, and it will actually facilitate that area that has some challenge, which is incredible. So what we're doing is I'm gonna invite you now, roll your feet, around like a clock. Notice what it feels like if you're seated for that pelvic floor. And you may notice how the, the back, the lower back softens as you get to the back. It's so lovely. It's a great massage for the lower back, especially if you spend a lot of time sitting. Now take your fingertips. So two fingers on each hand. I've got my pointer finger and my middle finger. I'm just gonna put them on my cheekbone very lightly because neurovasculars uh, are all about just engaging the energy with your fingertips and what's just below the surface of the skin. And so we're able to connect that up. So we're just going to bring that together. And as soon as I did that, I had a relaxation happen in my shoulders and my neck. And it's like all of a sudden my neck has a little bit more freedom. I don't know if you'll feel that. But if you do, that's lovely. Maybe you notice a deeper breath. Maybe you notice that just the mind all of a sudden just calmed right down. So we're going around that circle with the feet, with the sit bones coming around on the chair. All right. And I think we may have done, I don't know, eight or 10 passes. I wasn't counting, but it feels really, really good. And what felt lovely was this freedom that came into my neck. So you may just want to just do a little bit of movement around, just notice if you had a tight lower back, maybe that's let go. You may notice that the hips might have a little bit more movement. And if you have the space to walk around or you're listening to the podcast while you're walking, then maybe you stopped, did that activity. And now when you start walking again, you can notice what it feels like. And if you wanna actually go out, take a walk and try this, you also have that opportunity too. Okay, so that gives you a little bit of why I put a goal in place at the beginning about why I pull a card and the message that's on the card and the value that it could have for you and, and the goal that you have. And then why these little activities that are hidden in here as a way to energize and activate things. Uh, right now I'm noticing that my feet are really buzzing. So we actually had to find my fourth and pinky toe while I was explaining to you the points on the feet. Uh, now that's kind of buzzing, my foot's buzzing and is coming up coming up my lower leg uh, past my knees and I'm sitting down. So the fact that it's coming past my bent knees is really remarkable. So I'll just keep paying attention. It might start to come up into my thigh, which would be great. Okay, so that gives you a little bit of activity, a little bit about the cards. But then we also have the teas that I bring on each time. So Dance Debut Inc. is about movement to heal the body. It has to do with dance, has to do with Tai Chi, it has to do with activities like I just showed you, which is foot sensors. There are lots and lots of ways that we can engage the body and bring it into balance and flow so it can harmonize and it can participate in all the things we want to be doing, to be physically active, creative, engaged with other people. This is part of what Dance Debut does. So now I'm going to shift over to the Cape Breton Tea Company, which is another aspect of the work that I do. This started with a series called Teas with Intention, and it was under a different brand name. Then we brought it under the blanket of the Cape Breton Tea Company just in this last year. And what I've noticed for these teas is all of a sudden they found this voice that they didn't have before. Somehow by being connected to Cape Breton um, and the Cape Breton Tea Company, their voice is getting louder. So there's a book you can get called Teas with Intention and it explains how you can monitor to find the right tea blend for you, 
how you can use different kinds of charts to support goal setting, intentions, choosing T's for different kinds of outcomes, for energizing, for supporting and nurturing. There's a lot of background information that goes into all the blends that are a part of the Tea with Intention series, and that's located in the book. There's also workshops that I offer, so you'll see those come up periodically and always happy to have more people come on. One of the workshops is Tea with Intention. So being very specific and giving people a chance to try the different teas and participate in understanding the background of the teas. There's also an herb workshop and the herb workshop is the result of the work of Evelyn Mulders, a lovely colleague of mine. I'm just going to pick up her card deck so you can see. So this is called Whispering Herbs Healing Cards and all the information that's within this card deck is what actually went into the teas with intention. So many people think, oh, we just, you know, put a compilation together, or chose, chose a specific set of herbs um, just because we liked them or it would create a good flavor. But actually we were very strategic in how we did it because we wanted to engage the five elements from Chinese medicine. There's that little bit of theory again. And Evelyn took uh, the Western herbs and she put them, um, imposed them over top of that five element wheel. She also linked them up to the chakras. So if you are a person who likes to tune into chakras, it's another way to deal, uh, deal with, to play with the herbs. And I say play because herbs really do love to play. So I'm just sharing that information if that's where the information for the teas came from. And then we created, there's 14 blends all together under the teas with intention. We have uh, several for uh, fire element. We have three for fire element. And we have one for earth, metal, uh, water, and wood. But then we also have central and governing who aren't really part of the five element theory. But there's three T's that were created that could link in central system, governing system, and the two systems linked together. Sounds amazing, doesn't it? So when you start drinking these teas and you start engaging with the herbs within the teas, life changes. So at the start of every podcast, you hear me ask, what is somebody drinking? And I'm doing that because I want to know what people choose to put in their, into their tea mug or their, many people choose water. Some people are coffee drinkers, but what are they doing? How are they hydrating every day? What mug do they choose? Many people have favorite mugs. They have ways that they like to hold the mug. You've seen the, the mug hug we've talked about on, on the show. And so this whole piece cultivates a ritual, a tea ritual. And holding on to that tea ritual, if you're listening to the podcast, you can go make your cup of tea. You could be making the tea with intention that's for that day in that podcast. You could be choosing not just something because it's it's good for something like you're trying to fix something but because it's going to cultivate energy that's a different way of looking at the herbs and one of the things that i know with the herbs is they don't want to fix they don't want to be your solution they want to be your helper they want to go hand in hand and walk together with you to help you find the ways to really energize and gain vitality in your life. But many of us will go to the store and we'll, we'll look up on the tea shelf, right? And you'll see ginger and it goes, you know, good for digestion. You go, ah, I need some of that. And you're taking a medicinal perspective and you're saying, I want you to fix this problem. But that problem might not even be a priority, might not even be on the, um, radar of the body it has other things it's working on and then you bring in ginger and it, it doesn't know where to put it because it doesn't know where the final goal is it's working on something else and that's where intention is important but also choosing the herbs choosing the blends that nurtures and supports the way the system is trying to heal you and bring you into harmony and we have brilliant brilliant systems so the more we support instead of try to fix, the more we have the opportunity to gain energy and vitality. And that's how we really do the living. 
So today is, uh, again, I'll just see if I can just turn it a little bit. I'm holding up the package of Symphony of the Earth. And this is part of the Earth element, has to do with the stomach and spleen merid meridians. So the energy lines for those two. And what we've put on every package are um, affirmations and inspirations to help you use that blend in a different way. So on the front of the package, it says, the earth element reaches your soul's calling. The synergy of this blend provides gentle persuasion to shift with a new perspective. Now, if you think about the card that I pulled, and remember, I just cut the deck. That's very close, isn't it? And then we have the activities that we engaged in and whatever your goal was that you set for the podcast today. So as you're thinking about that little bit of reflection, what we have in Symphony of the Earth is orange and red bush rooibos. We also have lemongrass, peppermint, hibiscus, and ginger. There's that ginger. So I want to talk about a couple of the herbs today so you can see about how the perspective is slightly different. On the back of our package, I'll try to hold it up. Okay, so you can see, you'll see there's a whole bunch of little spaces in the center where we've put affirmations. So it says how to make the tea, how to hold that tea in the palm of your hand and breathe in with that intention and goal that you have to open your heart and mind to the change you wish to see and then allow that tea sipping experience to help you create or change that picture and to bring it really vibrantly to life. So the affirmations for Symphony of the Earth. With each sip of tea, I feel the roots of my body stab established themselves in full support. The tension in my body relaxes as I understand new directions are supported and things are possible. And the last one, the openness flowing through my tissue is creating a new possibility for responses and action. So you brew your symphony of the tea or um, symphony of the earth tea, and then you pour it hold the teacup in your left hand and take a moment to reflect. So I had you hold that tea in your right hand. That is offering and giving, letting go. Now the tea is in, that was your right hand. Now the tea's in your left hand. And that's going to be where you bring in. That's the change. That's the opportunity for energy and vitality. You can see how this little ritual could be very helpful. Okay, so now let's go to the herbs. And let's bring you in a little bit into some of the power of the herbs. So I've pulled two ingredients that are in this blend. So I've got peppermint. So this card is what the card is that is from Evelyn's card deck is so beautiful. These cards are just fantastic. There's a picture of the herb, a big picture of the herb on the front. And then what it says there is an affirmation as well. I exude graciousness in all that I do. Now, if you think about your goal today and you think about all the things that we brought from connection to the earth, um, being grounded, stability, I exude graciousness in all that I do. Imagine how that connection is, how connecting to the earth element provides you the stomach and the spleen with connection, but also the graciousness that they function at and then the actions that you provide or offer to yourself or to others, how do you do that with graciousness? It's a great reflection. The physical aspect of peppermint is it does aid in digestion, but we don't know that that's what the body really wants. So we don't always have to focus on that. We could focus on the emotional aspect, discontentment. How with your goal, and where you are in, in life and what you're doing at the moment, might you be discontent? What might you need to bring around content? And the goal that you created today, how does discontent play within that goal? How does content arise out of that goal? And the mental aspect of peppermint is graciousness. Okay. This is part of earth element. So stomach and spleen meridians are involved. 
but also the heart chakra. So when you act graciously, that likely is coming with some compassion in it. And that's that opportunity of reaching out. And when you're gracious to yourself, you give yourself the space to feel, to explore, to create, to engage. Okay, that all from peppermint. So let's look at ginger, because ginger is another one that's often people will go to the store and try to pull it off the shelf or they'll put ginger in their cooking. So ginger says, I am safe and secure and I have more than I need. Now that changes ginger, doesn't it? And if we look at the physical aspects, it invigorates the stomach. Now that's a little bit different than thinking about aiding digestion helping with tummy troubles, um, being able to digest food better. It invigorates the stomach, energizes, revitalizes. Then the emotion with this is empathy. Empathy. How can you understand someone else's position and respond? And your response is going to be the compassionate part the graciousness part, those two are combined in this D. So that gracious part, because you can empathize with people, but you don't have to come into their story and be a part of their story. You can support by providing from the outside, give them the strength to move forward with what they need. And lastly, the mental aspect of ginger is living in paradise. As you look at your goal and your intention, how are you living in paradise? And it may not seem like it's paradise till you start to look at some of the incredible gifts that are around you. Maybe it's some people in your life. Maybe it's where you live. It's the ground that you stand on. Might be the activity that you're involved in. Could be things that come your way. So you start to look at what are the things that provide me with the opportunity to live in this paradise. And the, it's part of earth element. Stomach and spleen meridians are part of earth element. This is for stomach meridian. And it also is related to the sacral chakra. So that's below the belly button. That is a place where when you feel grounded and secured, so that'd be your root chakra, then the next place up is when you feel that security, your opportunity to start to reach out, to be able to cultivate. Um, belonging, knowing that you are where you're supposed to be. Okay, that is a lot to think about, but I'm hoping that you start to understand a little bit more about the layers that are within the podcast, the opportunity that each guest brings as they bring their gifts of experience and opportunity into the podcast. And then all of the activities I ask you to participate in have a meaning and a background. If you hang out for the full length of the podcast, you know that you're going to be energized at the end because it's devised that way. So now I always ask people to have a sip of tea at the end after I've introduced the tea. And we usually do a cheers, which is always that thank you so much for connecting and collaborating with me. I'm looking forward to the conversation. Today, what I did with Symphony of the Earth is I made it into a cold blend instead of a hot blend. The, the hot tea is an orange golden color. It's so beautiful. What I did today is I added a tiny bit of honey, just a sweetener, which I don't typically do if I'm drinking a hot tea. But when I'm making a beverage like this, I, I like to add just a little bit. So I've got um, a teaspoon of honey in the bottom of it. I'm holding a tall glass for those people listening. I put oat milk in. So what I did is I made, I boiled up, boiled, I didn't boil the water. I took the water up to 80 degrees, so not to, quite to boiling. I made a concentrate of the tea. So I only put in about a quarter cup or a third a cup of water, hot water, to the tablespoon of tea. And I let it just sit for 10 minutes and just brew. And then I took that concentrate and I put that in the bottom of the glass with the honey. And then I added some oat milk. So again, I have a tall glass, so I probably have mm, about a cup and a half of oat milk. And then I just stirred it up and added some ice cubes. 
Now I could have had fancy ice cubes, which could have been made with the tea or could have had some flowers frozen into the ice, make it a little bit more festive. But what I have before me now is this incredible cold drink. So let's have a sip. Oh, the Roy Boss pops out and it's got that little bit of orange with it. And orange with the peppermint and ginger is just such a lovely combination. All right, the lemongrass that's in the tea, that's a very subtle to straw. So it's very subtle in its flavor and underneath. So even though it says lemongrass, it doesn't have the flavor of lemon, but it just holds this undertone of earthiness, which is lovely. So thank you for listening. You've done an activity. We've walked all the way through. I appreciate you sharing the podcast, helping others find it. I would love to have a review. If you could leave a review on the YouTube channel, you can leave a comment. If you want to go to Buzzsprout or any of the other podcast streams that uh, this podcast is listed on. There's the opportunity to leave a review there or a rating. It would be fabulous if you would start to do that for me. The more that I'm able to get the word out, the more people are going to find out the power of what is involved with this podcast and how people can be helped and supported through conversation and engagement with the activities I included. Thanks so much for listening. In season three, we have several different aspects to the podcast, and that is all for cultivating energy and activation in a specific way. At the start of the month, I try to bring in a message about the tools that I have cultivated in my discoveries as I've reached my doctorate. And from there, I go to interviews with guests who are specialists in their field, and together we create that cultivating opportunity. And at the end of the month, that is all about compassion, reaching out and living with compassion. And that's where my sister Charlene Waynes comes on and we talk about our lovely Moyo family in Malawi. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoy each of the renditions of the podcast. This is Be Well with Michelle Greenwell. Take care and happy well-being.